How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Last week I showed you how you could easily cut a subject out from its background in Photoshop and then replace that background as if they were never there to allow you to move them around within the frame. And today I'm going to show you how you can take that cutout, bring it into After Effects and start animating those two layers independently of each other in a 2.5D animation setup. Now I've put a link in the description so that you can download my cutout file so that you can work alongside me if you're interested. All right, let's start creating. Okay, so I have my cutout opened up in Photoshop. It's the one that you can download in the link. I've got the separate layers here. So subject is the subject whom I cut out from the background and the background layer is background. That way, when we bring this into After Effects, it's pretty self-explanatory that, you know, this will be the subject layer, that'll be the background layer. They keep their layer names, so that's hunky-dory. I'm also gonna be keeping Photoshop open with this loaded up so that if I need to make any changes to this mask, for example, along this sleeve, if there are any areas that aren't quite masked out properly, I can just do those changes in Photoshop, save the document, and it'll update automatically in After Effects. Okay, so let's launch After Effects and we're gonna import this cutout file. Okay, once you've found it, hit import and then import kind. You don't want footage because that's gonna merge the two layers. What you want is composition. Let's hit import and we're done. It creates a composition for you based on those layers, based on that media, but to be honest, I don't want a composition that's 5,472 pixels by 3,648. It's a little bit overkill. So I'm just gonna delete that comp and create a new one based on, based on an actual usable format. It's perfectly fine in HD, so I'm just gonna go for HDTV, 1080, 24, and then I might just correct that to 23.976 so that it matches the footage that I filmed on the camera. Okay, we don't need this to be 20 seconds either. We'll just make it 10 seconds. That should be plenty. Square pixels, we're good to go. Bam. Now, if you drop down this folder, you've got background and subject. Fantastic. So now you drag both of those in and you plop them on your comp. Now, background's in front there, so we'll just put that in the back, as in below, in an order then hit scale on both of those. And we're just gonna drag the scale down until it fits in the frame. Okay, and then just grab your subject and reposition her. Right, now before I do anything else, I'm just gonna save the project because so many people work away and then it crashes for some reason and they lose everything because they forget to save. Cool, that way I can rest a little bit more assured that nothing's gonna go horribly wrong. Okay, now at the moment, this is a 2D environment. I can move her around, sure, and I could move the background around independently, sure, but it would still be a 2D environment because we're not working with any cameras in After Effects and these layers are not 3D layers. So let's go ahead and right click, create new camera. Let's make it an 80 millimeter preset because this was actually shot on an 85 millimeter lens. So it's roughly, roughly matching. Okay, it gives you this little warning. In fact, I never want to see that warning again, so there you go. Then right click again, new null object. Make these two background layers, subject and background, 3D objects by clicking on that cube there, and make the null object a 3D object as well. Then on the camera layer, take this lasso parent and drag it up to null two. You can also just drop down this list and select null two. That way, if we hit P on the null, this now acts as a camera control for us. We can move up, down, left, right, and we can move in and out on a Z axis. That's perfect. I'm just gonna reset that. So now if we come down to active view and do custom view one, you can see that both of these layers are on the same focal distance because they have exactly the same position and scale. So what we're gonna need to do is actually move the background layer backwards. So you can either use these arrows here, these figures in the actual comp window, or you can just hit P on the keyboard, hold shift and hit S, and that way it'll bring up your position and your scale. Now position, you're just gonna drag the Z axis back. And I mean like way back. In fact, let's just type in 5,000. Okay, if we come back to active camera, you can see now that that is very small in the background, it's too small. So what we're gonna have to do is scale it back up so that it fills the frame again as it did before. Now it scales back up to 78%. What's interesting now is that if I drag this null object, she is moving at a different speed to the background, the same as you would have if she were in fact in front of a real camera that was on a slider. So right now we're replicating a real life camera and that is where all of the fun starts with After Effects. So let's in fact scale this up a little bit more so we have a little bit more room 
to slide around. And I'm also gonna drop her scale a little bit because I think she's actually a little bit too big for the frame to start with. There we go, that's better. So what we're gonna do is come back to the very first frame, hit the keyframe on position, go to the very last frame and just move the camera in. So it's tracking inwards. We're also gonna make the camera track towards the right. And that way, if we play this through, it's just tracking nice and slowly towards her left shoulder, camera right shoulder. Now we need to start adding a few elements in this, foreground elements and background elements, just to make it a little more believable. So if we open up a web browser, I've just typed in leaves PNG, and I'm hoping to find something that's an autumn leaf. That looks pretty good, let's see, yep. It's a PNG because you can see it's a gridded background. Let's right click, save as, maple leaf, there we go, cool. Okay, and then After Effects, we import that back into the project and we come down and we drop it there and there's a big fat maple leaf right in front of her face, so that's not ideal. So we're gonna just hit that 3D frame there. We're gonna scale this down because it's way too big and then with position, we're gonna bring it forward. If we drop this down and go two views horizontal, we can actually make a better use of all our space here. So here we have the active camera. This is what we see as the comp. And if we select this here, we can drop this down to active camera and go custom view. And that way we get a bit of a better sense of how our placement in the 3D sphere. So our maple leaf is there, our subject is there, our background is there. That's actually a little bit too close, I think, maybe for the maple leaf. I think if we run the camera through, oh, no, that's not too bad. That's okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Let's just shift it over so it's not in her face. Okay, and then let's just make a few duplicates of this and we're gonna rotate it. Z rotation axis so that it's kind of obviously not the same exact leaf. Move this one back a little bit so it's closer to her. Scale that back up so it looks roughly the right size. And then again, duplicate that again. Bring it over there. Let's move this one even further back. And then again, scale it up. Okay, and that looks a little bit naff, granted, because they're all in focus when they should be really blurry. But if we just scrub through this, it shows you how they're interacting in a 3D environment and how that camera is moving through them as if they were in the way of an actual camera. That's really cool. So now let's just hit P on all of these to bring up the position. And we're gonna keyframe some positions so that they're falling. Okay, go to the first and last frame of the composition. And on the very last frame with all four selected, just drag this down. Now, if we scrub through this, you can see they're falling nicely and it kind of looks like it's a slow-mo shot of us tracking in on a camera. If you wanna move any of them without messing up the keyframes, just select the position property on both of them so that it selects both keyframes and provided your playhead is on a keyframe, you can just click and drag them and it will keep that vertical movement without offsetting it. Okay, now usually to add depth of field and blurriness to an environment, I would just use the depth of field option that's on a camera. If you hit A twice on the camera, it brings up your camera options. And there you've got aperture, you've got depth of field, and you can turn that on or off. However, because the background is already so blurry, I think adding all that extra aperture is just gonna make that one big mess and it's actually gonna lose its aesthetic a little. So instead, what I'm gonna do is add a camera lens blur to all of these leaves. Camera lens blur is essentially the same tool that the camera uses to create blur, to create bokeh, but it's an effect that you can apply to individual layers instead of applying it as a blanket blur to everything. So if we type in camera lens blur, double click that, add it to one of your leaves, you'll see there camera lens blur, blur radius, and you can just drag this up until it looks like, it looks like it's right. So that leaf there, that looks pretty good. Next up, I'm just gonna drag the roundness of this bokeh all the way up because I want it, I don't want any kind of sharp angles on it because the bokeh in the background is wide open with circular blades. So having a hexagonal shape on a bokeh, it just wouldn't make sense. So roundness, 100%. And then diffraction fringe, I'm just gonna make this 200 to make it a little bit more realistic. Okay, now I'm gonna copy this lens blur, Control C, I'm gonna to come to the next maple leaf, and I'm gonna add that on there. Now this one is just in front of her, so in fact I'm not gonna add that much, I'm gonna make it maybe 20, then on to the next one, and this one I'll make it 40. And the final one that's very much in the foreground, that one can be yeah, 60, 65. Now if I scrub through this, it's already a little bit more believable. I'm really hating that leaf though, where it is. I, I just, I think it's, <laughs> it's a little bit too close to her. So I'm gonna hit position over a keyframe and I'm just gonna drag it away because I don't want that to be landing on top of her like that. 
And now you can see these leaves are falling very nicely. One more thing you can add to them though is a bit of rotation. So if you hit R with all of them selected and hit a keyframe on the Z rotation and then come to the end of the composition, add another keyframe on Z rotation by clicking there, then you can rotate them all with a slightly different amount because they aren't all gonna rotate the same amount. And again, scrub through it and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And the thing that really makes a 2.5D animation work is adding in subtlety, adding in, I mean, these are very obvious because I'm wanting to show you how you do this quickly. But if you spend a couple of hours on this, you could add in so much foliage, so much stuff in this frame that is very subtle. It's moving very subtly, but it really just, it really forces you to think that's real. Like it makes your brain just think that what it's seeing is real. Okay, and then there's other things you can bring into this. For example, a bit of lens dirt always goes well. So if you watch my tutorial on how to make your own lens dirt, you can actually download this uh, little lens dirt image for free, overlay it on top of your scene, drag down the scale, and then change the blending mode by toggle switch here, change the blending mode to screen, and then just drop the opacity so that it's really subtle, and then make that a 3D layer so that it actually moves with the scene. Okay, you could even do something like add a cheesy lens flare. I mean, it doesn't have to be a cheesy lens flare just because you're using a lens flare, right? I mean, if you have optical flares, that's fantastic. I'm not gonna show you optical flares now because I just can't really be bothered. But if you go for the 105 prime and then just drag this out of the way up here and then keyframe the center, come to the very end, and drag that up a little bit so that it moves a little bit towards the left and top. And then you could even Alt and click the flare brightness and just type wiggle, open bracket, five, five, close bracket. Actually, maybe put it at 20. And that way that brightness is gonna wiggle five times a second at a range of up to 20 in that percentage. And that is just gonna make it look like the sun's coming through the trees while your camera's sliding forward and your leaves are falling slowly. And then finally, you could even create a solid. Let's make this one teal. And then create another solid. Make this one orange. Select your ellipse tool. On the orange one, we're gonna draw an ellipse up here near the sun, lovely. On the cyan one, we're gonna draw an ellipse down here in the shadows, lovely. Then you're gonna hit F on the keyboard. It's gonna feather that mask. And then same thing on the cyan one, F on the keyboard, feather that mask toggle these switches and then change the blending mode of these to soft light. And that way you're gonna get a little bit of a color toning going on and it's just gonna blend everything a little bit better together. You can drop the opacity as well if it's a little bit too much, like that. I think that looks pretty good. It's very simple to do. It doesn't take a lot of time. Obviously the more time you put into it, the more effort you put into the fine details, the better it'll look. But for this, it doesn't take much and you can get some awesome 2.5D animation. All right, I hope you found this tutorial fun and useful. I've just realized the microphone has been in shock this entire time, but it doesn't matter. I'd be very keen to see what you made using my cutout. So here's my offer. If you create a 2.5D animation using the cutout that I put in the description and you upload it to Instagram, tagging me at DOD Media and put a hashtag DOD Media in the post description, I will send you a coupon code for any item on my store that you desire for free. Let's have a little bit of fun with this, see how creative you can get. All right, give it a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Hit that subscribe button to get more videos from me at DOD Media. Leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing what you guys do. All right, see you in the next video. Shh.